thank you so much for coming here to have your conference. I could hardly say no when it was in my constituency, could I? And uh, I hope you're enjoying being here in Manchester Central. It's a fantastic venue. I've not been here before, but I hope you're enjoying it. I think it's, uh, it's absolutely uh, brilliant. And I think you've chosen the right place, obviously, I would say that, because this is a fantastic uh, city, steeped in culture, music and the arts and industry and sports and everything else. Obviously, we've got the two main, uh, two main football clubs, but obviously one of them is better than the other. I'm a City fan, sorry about that. Um, yeah, it always arouses booze as well. Uh, and famed for music and, and performance, uh, we, everything from the Halle uh, to the orchestra to Oasis, the Hacienda, to the new factory, which I don't know if any of you have been to, the new factory is just around the corner from here is about to open soon as the new home for Manchester International Festival, which is a fantastic event we have every uh, two years. And we, we really are, Manchester, we pride ourselves that we're leading the way in digital and tech, a, a powerhouse for the creative industries uh, and digital, uh, anchored at Salford Quays, where we've got the BBC and Coronation Street, which actually used to be just around the corner from here. The, co the original cobbles are literally a stone's throw from here which you might know as well. But also to celebrate radio here in Manchester, because uh, as you know, uh, here in Manchester, we've got one of the most competitive uh, radio markets in the UK, uh, home to uh, many of the commercial radio stations and the national hub uh, for, for others uh, as well. So I'm just here this morning just to say a little bit about the future of, of audio ahead of what I think is, is an important time in terms of legislation and regulation with some things coming up uh, like the online safety bill, uh, a media bill possibly in the, in the Queen's speech and, and other things um, too coming up. And I was reflecting when I was thinking about this speech that uh, a song I used to sing when I was a very small child about 40 years ago, um, that video would kill the radio star. Um, that was 40 years ago, I think now. Yet we've seen over that time, haven't we, that, that British radio has proved itself to be remarkably uh, resilient. In fact, going from strength to strength, embracing innovation and change along the way. And today's landscape is, is very different from that of 40 years ago, but at its heart is, is very similar with that connection to uh, listeners and the audience that uh, radio is there uh, to serve. And there's been a, maybe a slower shift uh, from uh, AM and FM, but listeners are now increasingly accessing radio via DAB, online and through apps and smart speakers, which I'll say a little bit about more in, the, in a minute. Uh, innovations like DAB uh, radio uh, mean that listeners now have more choice of, of station with a plethora of fantastic commercial stations uh, and serving everybody nationally, regionally and locally alongside community radio and BBC stations as well. Um, and, and the rapid pace of technology, and you were just seeing some of that before, means that radio now incorporates video as well, uh, much to my own um, dismay sometimes, because when I get up in the morning to do a round of radio interviews and I have to put full face of makeup on, set up my backdrop and, and get the whole thing ready for the clips on social media, uh, which are just as important a part of the radio than the um, than the interviews that, that I'm, uh, I'm doing. And, and I think it's, it shows the importance of commercial radio to politicians and to that wider landscape. I cannot do a, a morning round or a, a, a broadcast round these days uh, without doing the full range of, of commercial radio uh, within those rounds. So we always do uh, Bauer, Global, LBC Talk, um, Talk Sports, LBC Others. Uh, it's a key part of, of, of a politician's uh, attempt to get their message out to to the public so that has uh, changed I think a, a lot over time and, and radio has been very resilient across the demographics as well we still see younger people uh, very much accessing a lot of audio content uh, through radio even though they are competing um, against streaming platforms podcasts and, and other other ways so part of the reason, I think, for radio's success is it can be that unique uh, relationship between the listener and, and the station. 
there's a special place for radio in sharing our day-to-day lives, listening whilst driving, uh, for me cooking the dinner on a Sunday, uh, tradespeople while they're working, uh, radio informing people about local news or warning of the latest uh, scam or combating loneliness with the voice of presenters, sometimes the only voice that people might hear uh, through the day. And and digital innovation uh, means that there's now a huge mix of of radio stations with something on offer for everyone. Listeners are almost spoilt for choice, aren't they? And that range of content can often be uh, bewildering. So in an era where everything is is available to stream and download and we live in this information age, what people want is someone to create curate that uh, content for them. And radio is that curation for, for many people. Um, And so you can switch on to your preferred listening at any time. I was asked before I came here to say a bit about my own preferred listening. Um, Sorry for the other stations in the room, but but I prefer to... Radio X is where I go for my music, I'm afraid. Um, And uh, LBC and Times Radio are a couple of my go-to sort of spoken stations. But so the death of radio has been predicted many times in the past, yet it's still going strong um, and more competitive than ever in, in, many, in many ways. So far from video killing the radio stars, uh, the radio stars have massively outlived uh, video. Um, but we've also seen, haven't we, the importance of broadcasting and providing impartial news just with recent events in, in Ukraine. And what's happening uh, in Ukraine has br- brought that focus again to the importance of uh, impartial news gathering and journalistic intent. Um, so I think it redoubles our efforts to ensure that here in the UK we uh, keep uh, radio and our broadcasting uh, ability uh, and we, we let it go at our, at our peril. And in that context, I just want to say a little bit about the BBC, who I know is uh, often a, 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 a bad word in these, in these contexts. But I know from speaking to many executives um, and others in commercial radio that actually uh, you value the BBC as part of that uh, as part of that mix, but it has to be uh, fair and it has to ensure that you can compete on a fair basis, which I uh, fully uh, I fully understand. But I think the BBC in its current fun- funding mo- model um, is is better for you guys as well because you don't want the BBC coming along and st- sort of competing for commercial uh, advertising uh, as well. So the BBC needs to live up to its its special status and its charter. And I know that you have concerns about Ofcom's review of the BBC and quotas for spoken content. Um, And the BBC should be looking at how it can preserve and enhance the unique role it has in the broadcasting uh, mix and respecting the quotas that it's been um, set. And I will ensure that I'll do my bit to to make sure that continues uh, to happen. But... You might have seen tweets from Nadine Doris late on a Sunday night saying she was going to end the BBC uh, as we know it in in one tweet. You know, I do support uh, the BBC and its funding model um, because I do think it's an important part of that ecosystem. But it's I, I also fully support the commercial sector, so I'm very alive to your concerns about that. But I do think there are opportunities there because this, I think the emphasis now with um, the BBC on impartiality, which is the right thing for it to do, is opening up new opportunities in the commercial sector, which is where people want to see uh, more opinion and debate. And, and we've seen, haven't we, that Global are able to come along and, um, and grab some of the best presenters and some of the listeners uh, from, from the BBC as well. So I just want to say a, a couple of other things about some of the future challenges that I think legislation uh, is, is, coming, is coming up. The first is around prominence. Um, Obviously, the shift to smart speakers and connected cars mean that we need to protect um, the reach of British-made radio content and its visibility uh, in online platforms uh, and into the future. The digital radio and audio review was a thorough piece of work, and I know you all played your role uh, in that. And it charts a path to underpin radio's resilience in the digital age, and prominence, uh, continued prominence in the smart speaker uh, age. I know that we're still waiting for the government's um, to, uh, formal response to that, but that's something that we will continue to raise uh, in Parliament. And I hope that we see the government's formal response to that 
uh, document before we get the proposed media bill, bill in the Queen's speech uh, coming, coming up. It's my belief that radio should be placed on a similar footing to television in relation to carriage and prominence rules so that it enjoys the same benefits as British television on major online platforms as well. Another area that I know many of you in this room will be keen to hear my opinion on um, is around advertising. Um, I'm a bit sceptical, to say the least, about the uh, rise of the sort of ban everything uh, attitude and the impact that has on uh, advertising uh, revenue. Um, we're seeing at, right now at the moment, in fact, it's being debated tomorrow, uh, again, in Parliament, um, the health and social care uh, bill, which will see the high salt, high fat, high sugar advertising uh, ban before the watershed. Um, and there are further moves afoot, I think, around uh, gambling uh, and other things possibly coming in terms of the online advertising consultation that's happening uh, at the moment. Um, we ensured and supported a, an amendment in, in the House of Lords, which unfortunately didn't pass, uh, to ensure parity uh, between broadcasters and the uh, online uh, platforms who at the moment could continue to get uh, all of that advertising uh, uh, instead, which I don't think is, is, is fair. So I'm sceptical about the um, public health response to these things always being about advertising uh, banning advertising on certain products on certain platforms uh, and that's something I'm keen to, to work with you on. And then the, the other thing I just want to mention is the online safety bill which we saw published uh, last week and will be coming to Parliament uh, after uh, Easter. So it's been long awaited, very important piece of regulation. Um, we've been promised it for, for, for many years now, but it's now finally before uh, the House of, of Commons. And it will provide much needed regulation to the social media and online space and, and not before time. We fully support the principles of, of that bill. So there is cross-party consensus around that. So it should pass through Parliament um, pretty uh, straightforwardly but we do think it could go further in some areas broadcasting has long been well regulated by Ofcom there's no reason that a similar regime couldn't be put in place for all social media and other platforms who publish and widely share content but this must look at business models policies and practice and not simply focus on content I welcome the special status for uh, known journalistic output that the government is talking about. And I would support moves to ensure social media and online giants pay for news which your journalists uh, have uh, developed. And I actually want this to be extended further too. So why should commercial radio have to pay to broadcast music, yet YouTube uh, shouldn't? Um, and I think there is a whole uh, area there to look at beyond this particular uh, bill.